Ember's joining us in this video. She really wanted my attention. Anyway, so I want to talk to you about your joints. Points of articulation are points of potential failure, but they are also shock absorbers. You see, our joints serve a very important purpose in the idea of mobility. We would not be able to move without them. We would just be rigid, as far as you want to go? Okay, go. Cool. We would just be rigid sticks of flesh, and that would be useless. So you need the, the joints there. Unfortunately, in your whole power chain, if you're talking walking from the ground, you've got your toes, ball of the foot, you've got your ankle, your knee, your hip, and I'm simplifying here, there's more you know, articulation than all that, but uh, you know, your knee, your hip, your waist, your spine, all of that goes into it. If you're talking any kind of upper body manipulation, you've got your scapula, your shoulders, the actual ball joint of the shoulders, you've got your elbows, wrists, fingers, all of that. And each one of those is a potential failure point. The further you get away from the core, the weaker they are. And so it brings up this idea, well, how do we treat that? How do we go about that? Well, understand that also these joints are not just there for the purposes of manipulation and movement. They are also shock absorbers. You realize that we are being compressed by gravity constantly. And so if we had significantly fewer joints, if we had no joints whatsoever, we would basically be just a pole driving into the ground constantly. And if you removed important features like say our ankles and our wrists, you would find that your elbows and knees would start giving out much more. And then your fingers and your toes, the balls of your feet and whatnot, would not have the same gripping and uh, digging in capability that they have. So these things that we call our joints really are not just important for mobility, but they are actually stress alleviation. Uh, if you ever watch a, a cat fall, what does it do? It spreads out to take the, the, the force of the shock, right? Um, it, well, if it's from a far enough height, most of the time they land on their feet. <laughs> but you know, if it's from a if it's from a, a high enough height where they have to roll and splat, their whole body spreads out so it can take the shock. Well, that's what our joints do. Our joints flex with the force so that we don't have to just take that force directly. Um, and we we see this in studies on, on gymnasts, uh, recent studies on parkour athletes. Uh, we've seen it in martial arts over the years. As humans, we take a lot of impact, not just from gravity, but from our environment and our daily activity. The shock absorption ability is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important. So you have to understand how to use that, and you know, it's beyond the scope of this video, but you have to understand how to use your body in such a way that you're dissipating shock so that you can maintain healthy joints and continue living and thriving and whatnot. On the other side though, as martial artists, we hit things. And when you hit things, you don't want shock absorption to happen. Shock absorption is the worst thing, other than missing, that could happen when you're striking. Because that means that you are not delivering force. You are in fact dissipating the own force that you're driving back into your opponent. This means, to a large degree, removing those shock absorbers or removing points of failure or at least locking them down so that they are temporarily not in a position to shock absorb. So a good example is kicking. In some styles of martial arts they actually teach to kick with the tips of the toes. That would be extremely precision kicking it would take a lot of conditioning and there are plenty of good kickers that don't go through all that so that seems a little out there for practicality. So then we move to say the ball of the foot with a lot of the snap kickers. Well you realize that when you deliver force with the ball of the foot the shock has to travel through the small bones of the foot, through your ankle, through your knee, into your hip, into your spine, and into your base. Um, that's a lot of points where shock absorption could happen, or even worse, where joint failure could happen. 
Now, an interesting thing happens. We move one joint up to the ankle. We solidify the ankle and expose the heel. We kick with the heel. Now what we have done is not only have we removed the ankle as a point of failure because it's now locked into a position where it's in, in its anatomically strongest possible position. But effectively to point the ankle at somebody, we have to straighten the leg out until the knee is no longer a point of failure. So you're really removing two points of failure by just aiming with the heel. Even better, throwing a knee strike. Yes, you have to get closer, but there are fewer points of failure. And it has been shown that knees are actually, in fact, more powerful than kicks. Same thing with hands. Finger strikes, well, it's precision and takes a lot of, you know, a lot of conditioning. And then we ball up into a fist and we take away a lot of that, but the wrist is still a uh, failure point. So then we go into elbows, and elbows are the most powerful upper body strike that is available to us. Now, of course, we can remove further down and we can just go to, you know, hips and shoulders and practice quadriplegic style kung fu. But at some point, you still have to realize that your striking is based off of levers and your levers are pretty much anchored at the shoulders and the hips so if you remove everything up to the shoulders and hips you no longer have a lever you no longer really have a strike so to to go any further than the elbows and knees is going to be kind of situationally dependent yes shoulder strikes and, and hip checks work they have their place hip drive is used in throwing a lot um, and lifting and all that stuff so don't discount the hips and shoulders. They are very, very, very important mechanisms in your leverage, but they're not the optimal striking tools. Really, the strongest striking tools are your knees and elbows. The optimal striking tools are your fists and heels. Um, you can transfer to a palm, and some people will say the palm is better than the fist because it doesn't break so easily. It's a matter of conditioning. I actually prefer palms a little bit but that's neither here nor there because a palm strike is once again it's actually taking the wrist out of the point of failure because you're hitting here which is going directly back in so you don't have you know unless you miss and just hit with your fingers you don't have that point of failure any in in play anymore because you've locked it down so i just want you to start thinking in terms of shock absorption and points of failure and what exactly you're doing. If you're running, you better be right that you need that shock absorption. Get on the balls of your feet because that is going to save your ankles, knees, and hips from the damages of running. If you're kicking somebody, expose that heel. Clock them with that big bone. It's going to hurt a hell of a lot more. So anyway, it's just a quick thought for you tonight, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Good journey.